Looking to train your technical team in industrial automation? Check out our range of courses designed to support your team's growth. Visit realpars.com business and complete the form. This video will discuss the often forgotten behind the scenes workhorse, the 24 volt DC power supply. We will talk about what can go wrong with 24 volt DC supplies. We'll discuss how power supply issues can impact digital sensor connections and impact analog sensor loops. We will also discuss calculating power supply requirements and diagnosing power related issues in the field. If you want to learn more about power supplies, I recommend checking out the course PLC Hardware Fundamentals, Power, I.O. Modules, and Signals. Let's start with what can go wrong with 24 volt DC power supplies. Power supply ripple is bad news. Ripple is an unwanted AC voltage sitting on top of the power supply's DC voltage. It is a byproduct of the rectification and filtering of the AC input voltage as the AC mains feed most power supplies. Many devices and circuits are unhappy with ripple, resulting in erroneous signals. An increase in load often causes an increase in ripple in older style power supplies. Overload is also bad. If the total current demand exceeds the power supply's rated output, problems ensue. What causes overloads? One cause is that too many devices are connected to the power supply. Unexpected excessive current draw by any load will also cause an overload. Some power supplies will shut down, while others might go into a current limit mode. Fusing load circuits will go a long way in preventing overloads. We'll show you an example of fused loads later. What if the power supply voltage output is not stable? Are instrument power supplies regulated or unregulated? Theoretically, an instrument power supply used in a two-wire loop does not need to be regulated because the transmitter will compensate for voltage fluctuations. Keep in mind that two-wire loops may not be the only circuits using the 24-volt DC power supply. Regulated power supplies ensure low ripple and exceptional noise reduction, which are essential in today's systems. For example, loops with heart communication cannot easily tolerate noise. Power supplies like the Phoenix Contact Trio PS are used because of their nominal regulated output voltage of 24 volts DC plus or minus 1%. Voltage drops are an issue, but not necessarily a power supply fault. A voltage drop occurs when the voltage at the load is lower than the voltage at the source. Ohm's law can be used to explain voltage drops. As we know, V equals I times R. Let's demonstrate. The voltage drop is equal to the current times the wire resistance. A voltage drop will result if the wire is too long and or the wire gauge is too small. Terminal corrosion causing unwanted resistances is nasty and will also create voltage drops. A voltage drop in a two-wire loop is not an issue because the current is the same at all points and the transmitter manages the amperage. But as we said earlier, not all circuits are two-wire loops. Voltage drops in other circuits can cause significant signal and reading errors. Let's talk about the impact of 24-volt DC power supply issues on PLC analog input circuits. Temperature circuits with resistance temperature detectors are susceptible to power supply issues. Older style RTD transmitters utilize circuits requiring precise voltage excitation. Any excitation voltage variance causes signal errors. Noisy power supplies are problematic on long RTD cables. We talked briefly about how two wire loops are affected by power supply issues. What about four wire loops with separate power supply lines and current signal lines? Generally speaking, today's four wire transmitters are quite happy with a wide range of supply voltages and therefore not susceptible to unstable supplies. However, ripple and noise are problematic and can cause erroneous signals. Let's discuss the impact of 24 volt DC power supply issues on PLC digital input circuits. PLC input modules tolerate power supply voltage variations up to a certain point, 
For example, the AB1756-IB16 input module has an operating voltage range of 10 volts DC to 31.2 volts DC. However, the onstage voltage minimum is 10 volts DC. Consider what might happen if the voltage applied to a digital input is 8.3 volts DC, caused by a temporarily overloaded power supply or a voltage drop somewhere. The outcome is unpredictable, and intermittent behavior may result. How do you determine the requirements for a plus 24 volt DC power supply? Or how do you know if you can safely add another circuit? It's important to determine the total current draw for all devices when each device is supplied by it and is drawing maximum current. Then, add 20% for good measure. How do you get all of this information? You need device data sheets, system wiring drawings, and loop diagrams. Let's go through an example. Our example system has at least one 24 volt DC power supply, and we're pretty sure it's in the PLC cabinet. If we want to, we can physically locate it by looking for fuses, circuit breakers, and a 24 volt terminal block in the PLC cabinet. We might even find a redundant power supply close by. We know that many devices and circuits require power, such as field devices, relays, solenoids, I.O. modules, and perhaps HMI panels. We have a good idea of what devices and circuits the 24 volt DC power supply is powering, but we cannot be sure without more evidence. Digging into our documentation, we find a level loop diagram with a level transmitter LTYA255 that shows a plus 24 volt DC connection through a 0.5 amp fuse on TB107 terminal number 40. We can condense and redraw this level loop into its equivalent two-wire circuit. We can assume other loads are connected to this 24 volt DC power supply, as it likely powers more two-wire loops, and possibly other circuits. There may be more power supplies too. Where do we look for other possible loads connected to this power supply? Let's see if we can find TB107 on another drawing. Upon further searching, we track down the wiring diagram for a 1756 IF16 analog input module, which shows us two more two-wire loops powered by the same plus 24 volt DC power supply connected at TB107 terminal number one. Okay, so far we've discovered three devices powered by this plus 24 volt DC power supply. Digging further into the documentation, we find a four-wire transmitter TTYA010 powered by a separate wide molar plus 24 volt DC power supply. Further sleuthing and digging will provide you with what you need to decide the requirements for the power supply under consideration. We'll end this video with a short discussion on diagnosing power-related issues. Erratic equipment behavior, weird signals, and unexplained glitches can be symptoms of power supply issues. An oscilloscope is the best tool for measuring ripple, but it can also be done with a digital multimeter, or DMM. The Phoenix Contact Trio PS we mentioned states a residual ripple value of less than 100 millivolts peak to peak. Because a ripple voltage looks more like a sawtooth than a sine wave, the DMM may have a problem because it measures RMS voltages. Nevertheless, the DMM set can be connected to measure AC volts across the 24 volt DC output terminals. Any reading exceeding 35 millivolts RMS indicates the power supply's specifications are breached. Measuring the power supply current to detect an overload condition is a simple solution, but it is not very practical unless you have a clamp on style meter. Conventional ammeters are placed in series requiring all loads to be temporarily disconnected. Detecting voltage drops requires measuring the voltage at the source, then at the load, and subtracting the two values. Visual inspection can detect loose or corroded connections in terminals. Thermal imaging devices can also be used if available. As mentioned earlier, if you're interested in learning more about power supplies, I recommend checking out the course PLC Hardware Fundamentals, Power, I.O. Modules, and Signals. 
If you're a plant manager looking to train your team, visit realpars.com business. Enter your contact details, and our team will get in touch shortly to explore how we can support your team's growth. You'll find the link in the video description.